Water quality is a condition of water in regards to the requirements of biotic species and human need. The water quality and human impact on it has always been an issue, and in 1908 we started to chlorinate, eliminating harmful contaminants and diseases. But in recent years, a new pollution has entered our water that the chlorination process cannot eliminate. Prescription drugs taken by the United States citizens has increased dramatically, and these pharmaceuticals are being found in our water. Good water quality and knowledge about it is important for both human consumption and the species living in the environment. Many people aren't aware of the growing problem that disposing drugs improperly creates. Scientists have only recently begun research on the issue and more extensive studies are necessary. We interviewed around the Chattanooga community to, dis to display the lack of knowledge among the population. When you have leftover pharmaceutical drugs, what do you do with them? I usually throw them away. Um, I guess we just throw them away. Um, sometimes um, we actually put them in the trash can. Um, in the past I've just flushed them. Down the toilet? Yeah. yeah. Are you aware of Chattanooga's pharmaceutical flushing problem? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I hadn't heard about it. Yes, I have. No. So I hadn't heard of the acute issue here, but okay. it wouldn't surprise me. If you knew that there was a facility in which you could take unwanted pharmaceuticals to to properly dispose of them, would you be willing to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would actually be wonderful. Uh, is it free? Yeah then yeah probably the water quality act and safe water drinking act have greatly helped water quality although there still isn't a solution for the presence of pharmaceuticals in our water systems yet there has been a 60 percent increase in the amount of people using prescription drugs in the united states in recent years which has led to elevated amounts of pharmaceutical residue found in water 70 percent of people in the u.s take five or more prescriptions prescriptions end up in our waterways by excretion of human and animal waste, flushing, and from soil runoff from landfills. In 1908, New Jersey was the first state to start filtering their water. Chattanooga was the second city in the United States. Water quality treatments like this one here in Chattanooga are responsible for filtering out debris, dechlorinating, and defiltering the water. Um, this one in particular is a little antiquated. Uh, it doesn't filter out pharmaceuticals like we hope, so we need to find better ways for our treatment plants to do this. More research needs to be done and more technology needs to be created. Informatics at Idaho State University say that sewage plants were never meant to filter out drugs uh, and that they were moving through the water plants without being eliminated. Uh, even when drugs are removed from the water, they are not gone. Uh, they become biosolids. Um, as of recently in the United States, a uh, geological survey sampled and uh, confirmed that over 80% of the nation's waterways and 50% of uh, groundwater is contaminated with disposed medications. Steroids and estrogen from contraceptives can impact the fertility and male to female ratio in ecosystems by causing males to have more feminine characteristics. Other studies showed that there was an elevated concentration of antidepressant drugs in brain tissue of fish downstream from a water treatment plant. Some organisms have seen decreased growth rates and increased organ failure. Because of the lack of funding and technology that the water treatment facilities have access to, the solution of the pharmaceuticals being found in our waterways is still a huge problem. Drugs found in our waters have been mostly antidepressants, hormones, steroids, antibiotics, cytotoxins that are used in cancer treatments, narcotics and even veterinary medicines are being found in all of our surface waters in Tennessee. Steroids from these from oral contraceptives are found to be affecting the fertility and the development of fish, reptiles, and aquatic invertebrates. And antibiotics are affecting the soil microbes and algae by con contributing to the antibiotic resistance that continues to rise as these substances are overused and incorrectly administered. Veterinarian antibiotics and antibacterias are affecting sulfate reduction in soil and inhibit decomposition of organic materials. In all Tennessee waters tested this far, drugs have been documented to be present. However, there is not enough documentation on this problem despite the fact that it is such a harmful issue. Um, further research and testing is critical before the side effects of pharmaceutical water contamination becomes too harmful or even irreversible. 
Tackling the problem of pharmaceuticals entering our drinking water is no small task, especially since there is currently no way to filter such substances from water. The best way to keep drugs out of water is to prevent them from entering such systems in the first place. This can be achieved by education on how to properly dispose of pharmaceuticals. Students could be informed in their wellness classes to take their unwanted prescriptions to proper receptacles. This information could also be related to the public through poster campaigns in pharmacies, hospitals, and health clinics. Another solution to this problem would be to expand pharmaceutical disposal days to every day by appointing a small building as a receptacle available all year. This could encourage individuals to forego flushing and throwing drugs away in the trash when there is no drug collection date near their spring cleaning.